that you can't even put a value on. Mm. Anybody loves his presence this morning? Anybody can say that you would never be able to survive without his presence? I see people shaking their heads. We could not survive without his presence. And sometimes people will say, just think positively. Just just reach for the, 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 the strength that's inside of you. That strong person inside of you. That strong person inside of you does this many times. It's not strong. We realize that. We need God's presence. We need his power. We need him living in and through us every single moment of every single day. Amen. It is with great pleasure that I welcome you all today, those who are sitting here and those who will be joining us later. It's a blessing. We don't know how many people we see different views. We see a few comments. And I want to take this opportunity to invite those of you who will be watching later. Um, if you would share a comment, that would be wonderful. Let us know how the, the, the sermons and the, the words from God are touching your lives because that would be such a blessing to us to know that, wow, something that came forth from this podium has ministered to some life somewhere in this world. To me, wow, that says it all. As we continue to avail ourselves to God working through us at restoring Church of the Living God, I'm going to have Pastor Wayne come up and, um, <laughs> do you see his face? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hallelujah. He has one sleep rolled up. He means that he's, getting, he's going to work. <laughs> he has something planned. I don't know. I see. <laughs> he's going to roll up both of them. <laughs> they have to. <laughs> okay. Let's just stretch our hands towards him. He's ready to work! Oh. In the vineyard of the Lord! <laughs> Thank God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for calling this broken vessel, for using this vessel, Lord God, to minister. Lord God, sometimes it doesn't seem he knows what's on the inside of him, but you know exactly what you have placed on the inside of him. You know the deposit, God, that you have put on this, inside of this vessel. We ask right now that, Lord God, as he opens his mouth, that, Lord God, your anointing will be upon him, and that he will speak not as Wayne Stewart will speak, but as the Holy Ghost will speak through him. Amen. Lord God, we, we band up and cast on every plan of your assignment of the enemy, Lord God, to just stifle this word or to, to bring any hindrance, Lord God, to this word. And we ask you that your word will flow freely, that your people will be receptive, Lord God, we would have ears that would want to hear what you have to say, hearts that would receive it. And Lord God, we just thank you and praise you for what you will do through this spoken word in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank invite you, Lord. you. We <clears throat> to you now. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Good morning again. What is the first Sunday again, right? God, it's already December. Can you believe it? The celebration of, 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 of the Lord coming into this, on this to this earth is around the corner. It's already here, right? Because even though we all know that Jesus was born on December 25th, right? We know that, right? It's the day we celebrate. It's the day we use to celebrate His coming. Right? So Amen. I've heard people arguing, well, we didn't come. I mean, I know we know that. That's right, that's right. That's <laughs> we right. know that. Amen. But we know it was this time of the year, you know, this time of the season, you know, that he came. So it could have been November, it could be November 1st, it could be January 1. Right? As long as we celebrate this. It. It's like we celebrate our births and we celebrate all those anniversaries every year, right? All the different, yes. whether it be national uh, uh, celebration or uh, memories or whatever. You know, why wouldn't we use this time to celebrate the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, right? Mm -hmm. That's right? So we sang that one song there, um, Waymaker. And some of the words in there kind of touched on what I mean, we're talking about this morning, bringing to you. Um, what did you say it was type of a, it was a, a um, 
No, uh, the, 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 what I'm bringing is a uh, in, 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 um, uh, exhortation. No, exhortation is uh, um, what's the word? Anyway, forget it. <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, Waymaker, you know, it says in there just a couple of verses. It says, even when we don't believe it, think it, we don't see it, we don't feel it, we don't see it. You're working. You don't feel it. You're working, right? When we don't think things are happening, the God's doing anything. You know, He's doing it. So that the the, the 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 topic or the title of my my small short talk this morning is God is in the background. Amen. He's in the this the 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 the, the that scene. The you know mm -hmm. that's sure. working. In the background, yeah. Yeah. in the scene behind the stage, all that goes on. All those, the, the the makeup and the costumes and the mm. preparation wow. for that presentation, right? Amen. All that's happening where we don't even know it's happening. We, even, we we know it's happening. We don't see it's happening, right? But we know it's happening. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's what I'm gonna speak about this morning. Yes. So just because we don't see God in our situation in our troubles in our heartaches our <sighs> tough times our agony our pain right mm -hmm. he's in the background Amen. he's doing it you know when you think about if we didn't have issues and problems and concerns we would never why would he even call upon God, right? Why we even get on our knees? Why we even call out to our brothers and sisters to help, right? Mm -hmm. So if you got to put those two together and say, there's a reason, right? There's a reason. Sometimes it's that God will be, you know, we'll have a testimony, you know, we'll, 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 we'll hallow him, we'll holy God, what, we'll thank you for what you've done mm -hmm. for us, Amen. right? He has always been working even before we came into this world. All right? In Psalms 139, 13. It says, For thou hast possessed my reins. He's controlled me. Right? Thou hast covered me in my wombs. Mother's womb. The Amplified Version says, For you formed me in my innermost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. So he knew all, everything about us, what we're going to do, what we're going to say in the background before we even came into this world. Amen. He's at work, he always. Amen. Amen. So we all need to keep, do, we all need to do as the keep, in, keep standing firm. We all need to keep standing firm right in your in our faith mm -hmm. for God mm -hmm. and believe in that in Romans 28 28 that and we know that all things work together for good for them that love the Lord to them who are the call according to his purpose so even when we are having our issues and our problems and our concerns in, in life, in this life. He's working it all out for good. At the end of that issue, the problems, when you make it through, you know he was in it. He's working out for good. There's a purpose. Sometimes why we go through these issues, right? It builds us up. It encourages us. It prepares us for what's to come. It helps us to, to help our brothers and our sisters that might be fine going through the same problems that they're going through, right? So they're going to call us on you for help, for a word, for That's encouragement. Right. That's right. When you think about the story of Joseph, right? And I'm going to go right forward into the part where he's, where his brothers throw him into the pit, right? Because they were, they were, they had up to here with him, right? Mm -hmm. All the, all those dreams that he had about 
his family's brothers is going to worship him. Mm -hmm. Ha! You must, that little thing? We're going to worship you? You know? I, I can understand how I probably feel the same way, right? His little brother, his little run, right? Telling you, you're going to worship me. You probably feel the same way, right? Yeah, you got to bow before you. Huh? So, yeah, they can understand why they got you know, angry at him and, and eventually threw him into the pit, right? But there was a, there was a reason, you know, God was right. working right. in the background, Amen. right? Amen. <clears throat> but eventually, he was appointed a second in command in Egypt mm -hmm. under Pharaoh, right? Mm -hmm. To help save the entire nation of God's people, Israel, from seven famines that was to come. All right, that was one of the, that was what, one of the things that, 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 that brought him out of, the, out of the prison, right? Because he, the, the, the Pharaoh had the, these dreams, and the dream was, you know, of the, 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 the cows and the, and with the famished cows and and anyway he went on to, to explain um he the, 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 he didn't understand mm -hmm. what the, what those dreams meant right. but joseph knew and they they they, they he had, he had already, he already explained dreams to the two inmates that were with him about their dreams so mm -hmm. it was it was it was known that he could explain dreams yes. and when he explained the dreams to pharaoh and told him what was coming and what to do. Mm -hmm. It saved right. the people of That's Egypt, right. and that, that that when his 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 family, his brothers and sisters, his his, his uh, father mm -hmm. came into Egypt because of the the family that was all that was yes. around the other nations. Yes. Amen. So there was a purpose, right? Who would know that thrown being thrown into a pit? Would end, you, would, you would end up being second in command in Egypt. You know? Mm. Isn't that God? Mm. God in God. control, well, working God. behind the scenes. Amen. That's right. So later in Israel, the Israelite people grew to a size that caused the Egyptians to fear them. Right? God's people. They were just multiplying and multiplying children and and they were trying to keep them down because they were afraid mm -hmm. that the Israelites, these little people, gonna gonna take over our, right. our 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 land and our homes and our city. Yeah. So they enslaved them, right? Enslaved them for how long? Four hundred years. Four hundred. You know, a generation. That's what six, seven, eight generations. You know. So during this time, Pharaoh instructed the midwives to kill all the newborns. Mm -hmm trying to stop the, the newborn male trying to stop mm -hmm. this this overtake of the of the Israels in Egypt yeah, that's right. but that didn't work right so the midwife they were told the midwife were told to you know kill all the all the males right to stop trying to stop this mm -hmm. but the midwives they knew better they didn't do it mm -hmm. right yeah. why would why would you're an Israel, Israelite midwife. Egyptian. Yes, Egyptian midwife, and they take take instructions from yes Pharaoh, mm -hmm. but kill the, 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 the very child that you were you you were you had the skill to to to, 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 to give life to, right? Mm -hmm. So no, they didn't they didn't follow that. They didn't follow that. So through that. Moses came in, came into being. Moses was born, right? Moses was, was saved. Yes, Lord Jesus. They did try to kill all the newborns, right? Went through the cities and tried to. The soldiers went through, tried to, try to kill the, the the ones that were a certain age, two years or right. or, or, or or older, younger, and tried to, to to do that. They, he tried, he tried, he tried, but still, he didn't fulfill what he wanted to do. Moses came out of that. Moses was saved by his sister, put in the in a little basket and went through went down the, the, the river Nile. Thank and what happened? Thank you, Jesus. God working behind the scenes. Pharaoh's uh, wife, right? Daughter. Pharaoh's daughter. 
uh, the maid of Pharaoh's daughter saw the basket and brought the basket in and the basket brought it to uh, the, the Pharaoh's daughter that was, that was bathing and, and, and she seen, saw the baby and she fell in love with the baby and put the baby into her, into her, into her home and raised that child. They didn't know that this child he was gonna, was gonna turn things around in Egypt and save the Israelites and bring them out of, of slavery. Didn't know. God in the background. Back, God working in the in the in, in this in the back scenes, right? Thank you, Jesus. So our God in the Old Testament is the same God as in the New Testament. Yes, he is. He's God of Abraham, Jacob, and Joseph, and the Israelites. So these stories just remind us of how great God is and yes. how you know, if he, if he did it for the Israelites, all those hundreds and thousands of people, do you think he can do it for you, me, all right? So when we're going through our difficult times and we don't know what to do, just remember, you know, just be encouraged that God, our Father, our Abba Father, right, is there in the background looking out for us. Preparing the way. So even if you can't feel it, you can't see it, you don't know what's going to happen next, be encouraged. Remember what he has done in the past, what he has done, what he, what he wrote, what's written in that, in that Bible, the good word to encourage us. So, at times we would have gone through some difficult time with our, our, our teenagers. We've all had children, right, that was that age and growing 13, 14 and getting to that place where you want <coughs> to, right, the, the, the hormones are, are starting to pump up and starting to do its thing and, and you want to, you want to, you know, you know what you want. <laughs> or maybe you've hit a rut, you know, in our relationships, in our, in our marriage. Also, our, our, our financial situation. No matter what it is, don't feel that you're in a frozen place where nothing's going to happen. Remember that he's in the background. He's working. You peek out your window at the first light to see that it is still dark and a blanket of snow is still covers the ground. We all know that, right? We've all experienced snow. Abroad. Yes. Abroad. Abroad. We have I believe we had it here in Jamaica. Up in the Blue Mountains sometimes I heard that we, there's some snow up there too, right? And the peaks. And frost. <laughs> so closest thing. <laughs> but I don't don't tell these days. <laughs> These days, there could be some snow up there right now. We don't know, right? That's right. But yes. So you look out and you see the, the snow, and it's cold, and it looks dreary and cold and dead and it's bleak. But what we don't see, what's happening underneath, hidden in the underground, under the blanket of snow and frost are the nutrients being broken down in the soil, preparing, right? Preparing the roots and helping the roots to grow deeper. Seeds are germinating. When the spring arrives, well, our spring, our warm weather, right? I still call it spring, I still call it winter. <laughs> it, the, we witnessed the first hand that, we, we, that there was indeed something happening during the winter season. Mm -hmm. The winter flowers in bloom, winter shoots are of green bursting from the soil, caterpillars and butterflies around the animals come out of hibernation in the spring. When we step into, this, into that season, we can't help but see how God was at work. In the, in the background, behind the scenes. Amen. It's a reminder that God is working, yes, 
even before planning these things, planning mm -hmm. these things in our lives, planning these things in our situations. Yes, yes. Yeah. Knowing what's going to come in the future. Mm -hmm. And certainly God is at work no matter what you and I are feeling. God doesn't change the circumstances. He's the changer of our circumstances. Mm -hmm. Even when we can't see God, we can remember He's faithful and true to His promises. Yes. He's always working. Thank you, God. In 1 Peter 5 and 7, Peter says, Casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you, 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 and you. Mm -hmm. Alright? Mm -hmm. Careth for us. You remember the verse about lilies and the lilies of the field and the birds of the air? That's right. How much more does he not care for you and me? If he cares for the lilies of the valley, that thing that we walk on, walk upon and trodden down and, and get cut down. Jeez. Right? He cares for those. How much more does he care for us? So just because we don't see any instant change does not mean that nothing's happening, that God's not working. You may not understand what's happening in your life at the time of, or the reason why you can't see any change taking place, but God does, and He has it all figured out for us. He knows our needs. He knows our situation. He knows everything about us. So just be encouraged when we have go through those difficult times, hard times, our losses, where we're in our room and we're crying for whatever the situation might be. Just be encouraged. In John 13 and 17, 13 and 7, Jesus, Jesus answered and said unto him, what do I, what I do, thou knowest not now but thou shall know hereafter. So what I do, you don't know, but you will hereafter. You will know in the end. You will know after, when you made it through the situation that I was there. He was there working through it for you. You don't realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand is the other version. Can you feel the tenderness and love of our Savior in those words. Think about a pregnant, a parent giving a sick child medication. Cod liver oil and sorosy tea. But what, what, what is good for you, though, right? You're going to give it to me because even though it tastes horrible, and you know it tastes horrible, you give it to me because it's it's good for them, good. and it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna fix that that illness and that sickness and that that, that pain in your stomach, Amen. right? Amen. So if you know that, you know he does too, right? Amen. That's a small thing, but imagine all those big things that we go through Amen. in life. He knows. Yes. Amen. He knows. He's there for us. When we consider the sun above the storms and the clouds and the hurricanes and the tornadoes that brings the floods and bring the destruction in our lives, the fires, we cannot be amiss of what is behind behind those, right? That's right. The sun. Always, right? The sun's always there, regardless what's going on in this world, what's going on right above us. Right. The sun's not leaving. The sun's always there. The S-U-N, but more importantly, the S-O-N, right? He's always there. So when we go through all the difficult times, remember that there's light, right? At the end of the tunnel, right? There's light, there's a sun, there's our Father, Jesus Christ, to help us through, to make it through what we're going through.
Sandy put a note in here. <laughs> just as I just said, remember that after. Huh? She says, always, she had to always comment that the sun has gone down and I, I have to be reminded, remind her that the clouds are temporarily covering the sun, like I just said. It's just temporary. Those clouds, the rain, the storm, it's just temporary. It's going to pass. Right? This true, this too shall pass. Amen. And Sandra has a, has a little short testimony to share with everybody. That's all right in line with what I'm talking about. So, and then go on to that. Okay. Is it a no. No. You want him back, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Say, we want Wayne. We want <laughs> And I'll do this with you. We want Wayne. We want <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to behave myself. Um, it's not 